believe that God still uh, sends prophets? We believe that God inspires people till today. He guides us. But the prophets, they began with Adam, Noah being the first messenger. And then the last of them was the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, right? Everything has a beginning and end, right? In, in the worldly life, right? God has no beginning and end, but that's the creator, right? Yeah. So that's the last prophet, but we do believe God guides people. Like we didn't just meet on accident, right? This was, a, this was something written for you to get this message, right? This is God guiding you because you got that want for truth in your heart, right? So you already had a belief that there is one God, right? But I'm sure when you went to church and they were telling you this white guy on a cross is God and prayed to a saint, in your heart you were yeah, kind of like, See, it, it confused you because it's confusing. And the Bible tells us that God is not the author of confusion, right? So now God is guiding you. He brought you here today, right? Like I always resonated with um, the crosses being, um, being woven from palm. Gotcha. Because that's just, that's art. And yeah. it reminds you of, of, of what happened. Right, but think but about this, right? When you go to church and see, you know. Yeah, the big cross display, and the yeah. dudes. And hanging up there, everybody sitting, pointing that direction, worshiping a, a idol, basically, right. right? That 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 confuses, right? So that's the thing. Even like, let's say your dad got shot, right? You don't want to be walking with a bullet casing around your neck, right? Somebody's dad got electrocuted. You're not going to put electric wires, right? Like like this is disrespectful to me, right? Jesus never said hang a cross on your neck, right? Or to worship a cross, right? Yeah. Even if you look at a lot of the historic documentation, they talked about how they used to put people on on. The, the palm of a tree straight up. It wasn't even a cross, it was a stake, you know? But the church made this symbolism to kind of brand themselves, right? Like right. you look at the Pope, right? Where did this whole idea of the Pope and wearing red shoes and white smoke and all this kind of weird stuff come up? It's all symbolism, right? And it was used to dominate indigenous people. When the Spaniards came to Mexico, when they came to South America, they didn't discover anything, right? What do you mean discover? It was already there, right? right. But they came and, and they used religion to try, to try to take away a people's identity and force something. They took the language away, right? All the native languages got taken out. Why? Because the Spaniards, the, the priests came, they, they, would, they would, you know, torture you if you spoke your own language, right? Islam never did that. That's why if you look at Indonesia, Malaysia, where Islam spread, they still have their language, right? Your own cultural practices, no problem with that. But when it comes to religious beliefs, then want to follow that which is clear, divine, and protected, right? Now, let me tell you the Islamic belief, and let me see how it resonates with you, right? One great creator, right? We don't, it's not a man, it's not a woman, it's not a figure, right? That creator created everything, right? And then gave different angels and different prophets responsibilities, right? Certain angels would be responsible for the rain, right? We don't worship those angels, we worship that one creator, right? Because he is the creator. But he has those great uh, any, uh, angels like Gabriel who brings the message, right? And then he has... I mean, for me, you know, going back to uh, where my, my uh, great grandma comes from, which is the town of Chicontepec, Veracruz. Yeah. They, they venerate the rain, right? They venerate the earth because they know that that's something. It's a bounty from God, right? It's a sacred thing that God is providing for them. Exactly. So for us, we appreciate that rain, right? We appreciate the ground, but we we worship the one that the gave us the rain. Right. Exactly. Doesn't that make sense, though? Like worship that Creator that gave us the rain. Worship the Creator that gave us the earth. When, when it rains, the Prophet, peace be upon him, he told us supplication. Allahumma sayyib and nafi' and he hoped to make this rain beneficial. We pray, we, we, we appreciate, right? When we get crops from the ground, we pray to the Creator. If there is a drought, we pray to the Creator. We appreciate when the rain comes, but we worship the Creator that sends it to us. Make sense? Right? That Creator loves us, so He guides us and He sends us prophets, right? Not to be worshipped, but to be followed, right? So Abraham came to his people, he told his people, don't worship idols, right? Eh? He, he broke the idols, right? He said, worship the one that... Exactly. Moses, same thing. He told his people, don't worship idols. Jesus, same thing. He told them, don't worship idols. Muhammad, same thing. He said, don't worship idols. Peace and blessings be upon all of them. That's why even out of respect, when I say Jesus, I say, peace be upon him. You know, if I say Muhammad, I say peace be upon him. Because we respect, we don't make cartoons, we don't disrespect any of that, right? right? We believe in justice, we don't believe in massacring and genocide like you see what's going on right now in Palestine and all that, right?
um, in the in the Islamic worldview, you don't you don't make any. Uh, I know you don't make any idols on Muhammad peace be upon him. We don't we don't make images of God. We don't make images of Muhammad peace be upon him. Or, or of any of the prophets. Of any of the prophets, right? Because that's like what you were saying earlier, right? It starts out as art, and then people start worshiping it, right? And that's what happened in the time of Noah. People made idols of pious people and then ended up worshiping them. So we believe in no idols. We believe that we don't need to give an image to God. We don't need to give even the prophet like what he looked like. We have books that describe him so you can read up on it. But we don't need to make pictures of him, you know? And this is why we believe in pure monotheism. But, but again, like, like what resonates with you? Like when it rains, you want to appreciate that. When crops come out of the earth, you want to appreciate that, right? But worship the one that gave it. Right? Makes sense? Yeah. So you believe in one God, yeah? Yeah. Absolutely. And you believe that God sent prophets, right? Well, I like Abraham, Moses. That God sent the Abrahamic prophets. Okay, good. But um, my question is so what about the Americans? So, as I said, as Muslims, we believe prophets came here as well, right? The prophets were not just the ones that are mentioned in the Bible and the Quran, there were so many more. Allah tells the Quran, we sent a prophet to every nation. And Allah tells the Quran, Ma arsalan rasulan illa bilisani qawmihi. We'd not send a prophet except in the tongue of his people. So we believe in the Americas, there were prophets and they spoke in the language of the people. We may not know their names today, right? Buddha could have been a prophet, I don't know, right? Um, you know, maybe some of the people that the Hindus worship could have been prophets. They shouldn't worship them, but they ended up worshiping them, right? Same thing with Jesus. He was a prophet. He didn't say worship me. He said worship the Father, right? The one that sent him. He worshiped God, but people ended up worshiping him, right? It's actually, uh, uh, from what I remember, that was a message of Buddha as well. Exactly. If you look at the original Buddhist teachings, it is not what you see today, right? They were not saying to worship Buddha, right? He was teaching them enlightenment, good principles, don't kill, don't harm others, right? Hey, you're a good one, right? But then people twist it up. Like today you got Buddhist armies, right? You go to Burma, they got Buddhists doing genocide, right? Yeah. That doesn't make sense. That's not the original message of Buddha. Today, even if you look at the statues, the big fat guy, that's not even Buddha. That's usually yeah, a statue of Confucius, right? Yeah, exactly. So they kind of, they, they changed it all up. Buddha, according to historians, was a very skinny man, right? So uh, that's the whole point that people change that message. But we have the Quran, we have it in Spanish. So uh, you want to give it to you. And this is, this is the words of God preserved, right? Not the words of Muhammad, peace be upon him, not the words of people, but the words of God, right?